high school. All right. Amen. All right. They got to know each other very well. Amen. When he calls the house, he sounds like my bishop. Yes. Amen. He starts to say, uh, praise the Lord, Bishop Carl. And then I find out that he met his Gresham. <laughs> Elder Gresham. And he is a young man that is mature. Amen. Above his age. Don't look at him. And think that he can't preach. Yes, yes. Because he can. Amen. He's a young man, amen, that is full of humility right. and humbleness. Amen. amen. Thank God for him. And when I look at him, I see myself in a uh, small way. And I'm so proud, amen, to be standing as the pastor of this church. Amen. amen. To introduce him to speak to my congregation. Amen. A young man that I have confidence in that can, amen, fully break down the word of God. If you don't mind with me, just stand with me, amen, as we call the Lamb of God to the forefront. Amen. The person of no other than Elder Cameron Grisham, come on and put your hands up on the floor. Waiting. Waiting. Waiting 
for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Uh -huh. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death uh -huh. before he had seen <laughs> the right. Lord's Christ. Uh -huh. We're going to verse number 26. It had been revealed unto him uh -huh. by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before the Lord's Christ. If you will allow me just for a few moments with the aid of the Holy Ghost, I want to preach to you from the subject the promise wouldn't let me die. I want you to prophesy to the person that to the neighbor the promise wouldn't let you down. That's why we're still here. That's the reason why the attack of the enemy couldn't take you out. That's the reason why when the enemy came in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifted up a standard. Wouldn't let it take me out. This being the year of 2012, 12 being the year of divine rule, power, and authority. This is the year that I believe Pastor Steele has been orchestrated in the heavens. That God is going to release supernatural favor upon the people of God. For some of us, if we would be honest with ourselves, we'd have to say that we've been looking toward heaven and saying, God, what's going on with it? Because in light of the word that has been given to us, it appears as if the word of the Lord is contradicting to the times. One ear we're hearing that God is getting ready to bless us that we are living under an open heaven. Yes. We are getting ready to step over into greater. Yes. We're getting ready to live in an abundance. Uh -huh. We're going to have more than enough. Yes. But when I look in my wallet and check my bank account, my bank account doesn't equal up to what God has said. Resting on my shoulder. 
I realize is that uh, those of us who are spiritually minded, I'm going to tell you, Ezekiel says in chapter number 37, that the Spirit of the Lord led him into a valley of dry bones. The children of Israel, when they were coming their exodus from Egypt, the word of the Lord said that the Spirit of the Lord again led them into where? The wilderness. When you vow to serve God, you must understand that you are going to have to go to the back side of the hill. That's where the anointing comes. You are not going to get an anointing for standing around and twiddling your face. And sitting on your hands doing nothing. The people that get the anointing are the ones that are crushed down to nothing. Because the center of it has been crushed, there should be no anointing. You want to high five somebody and tell them this is a productive hell. That's the reason why I'm going through. I'm going through everything I'm going through for sure. For the advancement of the kingdom. So now the promise has been given. The Old Testament gives us a prophecy. The prophet says, and a child shall be born of a virgin. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Somebody shout, God with us. Rest on his shoulder. But then as you matriculate through the Old Testament between Malachi and Matthew, the heavens are shut up for 400 years. So now here we are living with a promise that has been given. But yet, God is saying nothing. I want to ask you a question today. What do you do when you are forced to live in the silence of God? Which way do I turn? Which way do I go? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But how are you ordering my steps if you are sitting there? Uh, to manifestation, 